Hello, I'm Matthew and welcome to Call of the News. And up first this week is of course the winners of the Spiel des Jahres Awards are announced. The biggest award in board games other than my own award, the Spiel des Jahres 2, Die Harder. But Paleo, the cooperative Stone Age adventure game, beat out the competition to take home the Kenner Spiel or Strategic Game of the Year with Micro Macro Crime City, the cooperative deduction game, coming out on top to take the official Game of the Year award. I expect both of them are going to get big reprints, as is tradition. We already know that Micro Macro is getting a sequel, Micro Macro Full House, which is coming very soon. And I won't be surprised if we see an expansion for Paleo on the horizon either. But would you have made the same choice? Let us know what your game of the year was in the comments. <laughs> In the meantime, I wanted to mention that this episode is sponsored in part by Upper Deck's new line of gaming accessories featuring fan favourite Marvel superheroes and various vile villains. These accessories can be used with any game, including the legendary deck building game and Versus System two player card game. The first playmat in the series features artwork from the cover of the Sensational Spider-Man number 23, but there's also original artwork such as this mat depicting Thanos wielding the mighty Infinity Gauntlet as he faces off against the unrelenting Avengers. Because if it's one thing that the Avengers don't do, it's relent. There's also a variety of card sleeves available, there's the Hulk, Black Panther, Thor, Miss Marvel, Black Widow, Venom and more including Rainbow Thor on a unicorn card sleeves. All these can be found at your local game stores and by following the link in this video's description to UpperDeckStore.com <laughs> And all that talk about card sleeves reminds me that next I have somewhat of a follow up to a segment from the last episode in Chaz's, well, let's call it what it was tirade against counterfeit. Oh, fantastic! I am so glad that you mentioned that again because there is another thing about that that I wanted to say. And it goes a little something like this. Ultra Pro have announced that the market is being inundated with counterfeit versions of their products with all manner of card sleeves, deck boxes and binders just to mention a few. They've said that they're investigating the source of the counterfeit goods and are warning retailers that they shouldn't buy anything Ultra Pro unless they buy it from Ultra Pro. And Ultra Pro, not unlike Asthma Days we covered in the last episode, are willing, eager, and prepared to take legal action. And you can help. If you believe that you've received counterfeit Ultra Pro goods, well, contact sales at ultrapro.com and let them know about it so they can send those, those low down, two bit, no good jackaninnies off to the cleaners where they belong. I said it. Jackaninnies. <laughs> The Palaces of Carrara is getting a reprint and that's very exciting news to me because the Palaces of Carrara just so happens to be a blooming brilliant game with copies in English being as rare as hen teeths. Exhibit 1, my copy is in German and even that was difficult to track down like some type of bandit out on the open range. I'm making a lot of western references. I'm just noticing that now and I tell you, I don't know why. The game from dynamic designing duo Michael Kiesling and Wolfgang Kramer, who between them have designed an incredible amount of great games, Azul and El Grande, it's, it's a very long list. It's a game of resource management and opportune building, and I love it. Game Brewer are bringing it back to Kickstarter later this year for a reprint and update, with both a beginner and advanced version being added. And this follows Game Brewer's Kickstarter MO with games like Stroganoff, Hippocrates, Paris, all coming before it. And Paris also designed by the duo, so I'm happy that more people will get the chance to play what is, in my opinion, a wonderful game. <laughs> If you're aware of any other Matthew Jude branded media, then you'll know that I'm a big fan of monsters, mysteries, and the unknown. Like my podcast, Death by Monsters, a show all about monsters, mysteries, and the unknown that I do with these guys. Death by Monsters. It's the best thing ever. So what happens is you have a monster kind of like doing something like this, and I'm making a strange movement here, and then I'm going to start doing... Sorry, folks. Uh, the point that Matthew was supposed to be making here was... Speaking of monsters, Osprey has announced a sequel to their deduction game Cryptid called Cryptid Urban Legends. That is what Matthew was supposed to be talking about, not 
whatever this is. This is not, what? How did, how did you even get there from, okay. So, so we're, we're just gonna, we're gonna let Matthew give him a few laps here to circle back to where he was supposed to be and he's coming any minute. Now he'll be in, he's back on topic, okay. Cryptid Urban Legends is a two-player asymmetrical deduction game with art by Quan Chi Moria, and as players take on the opposing roles of cryptozoologists versus cryptids as they chase each other around an urban environment. And the Mothman-esque Bacht art had me already, and I'm super excited about this one. I like weird cryptids, so I'm looking forward to the release of this in April of next year. <laughs> Ravensburger have announced the Echoes series of games, which is a new twist on the cooperative mystery game genre, where you'll be solving mysteries of course, but you'll be doing that via an app that will play audio clips for you which hold the clues you need. Be they voices or mysterious noises, you'll have to look for those clues within the soundscapes in order to solve the case. There are three games in the line slated so far, all with very German titles, but one has you looking for the ghost of a young girl who's haunting a Scottish manor, another has you lurking around the New York underworld as a dark plan is made in an illegal bar, and the third takes place in the far future where civilization lies in ruins and the echoes of the past hide the tragic story of its downfall. My guess, Mothman. Echoes is coming soon to the German market, with an English language release surely in the future at some point. <laughs> something that got my attention while endlessly scrolling Twitter waiting for something interesting or important to happen while avoiding my own life was Tiny Library. Tiny Library is this cool RPG project which within a deck of cards offers 50 new and original role playing games each no longer than one double-sided playing card, which just sounded so cool to me. There's heists, detectives, dungeons, raiding, trading, racing, and time travel RPGs to experience, and it'll be on Kickstarter on August 31st. It sounds fascinating to me, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Another totally different type of Kickstarter also caught my eye this week, and that's ABCon. ABCon, which has been dubbed Sub-Saharan Africa's first board game convention, aims to introduce the people of Nigeria to the joy of board games. And the fifth African board game convention will be this December, and they're raising money to achieve just that. They have a mission to create a platform for tabletop game designers, content creators, publishers, manufacturers, and players and have been doing so since 2016. And the money raised for the convention will go towards supporting the burgeoning and rapidly growing community, and the original $5,000 goal was met in the first 11 hours, and will help towards the venue, logistics, media awareness, staff, everything else that goes along with the convention. I think it's a great project, and if you do too, then there's still time to show your support over on their Kickstarter page. <laughs> Question. Do you want to buy a murder house? Answer is yes. Yes, of course you do. And now you can because the house believed to have been the inspiration for Cluedo is up for sale and will only set you back one million pounds. Yep, that's right. We call it Cluedo. This four bedroom, two bath, terraced manslaughter mansion has got a billiard room, a ballroom, an actual secret passage. Yes, though they're most likely hasn't been a mystery killing there yet. Yeah. Anything's possible. <laughs> and finally, I have some overall good news for the board game industry, and that's the fact that the US and Canadian hobby game sector grew by 21% to just over $2 billion, which is up last year from 1.6 billion. Every category of games went up, collectibles, card games, RPGs, minis, and of course, board games. And while board games themselves make up a smaller part of this overall number, the hobby gaming world is growing, categorically and undeniably growing. In part, this is fueled perhaps by the last 18 months of people staying at home. But this is continual growth. This is a continuation of a trend, which just makes me happy. But good heavens, that's a lot of money. But it's split a lot of ways between Magic the Gathering, Games Workshop, Asmodee, and everyone else, but numbers are going up, 
which means more people are enjoying games and I'm all for it. You know, more people playing games, loving games, spending quality time as humans around a table or over a Zoom call with games. And that, in my opinion, in a small way, makes the world a better place. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'll see you next time.